Good evening. Welcome to the Primetime News on MITV. I am Jumoke Michaels. The suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefiele, is in the custody of the Department of State Services, DSS. This is according to a statement by the Public Relations Officer, PRO, Peter Afunaya, on Saturday. It said the Department of State Services, DSS, hereby confirms that Mr. Godwin Emefiele, the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, is now in its custody for some investigative reasons. The revelation comes hours after the DSS refuted reports that Emefiele was in its custody. Amid reports of the arrest widely spread on online, Afunaya said in a terse statement on Saturday morning, currently, Emefiele is not with the DSS. Chief Whip of the outgoing Ninth Senate, Senator Oji Uzokalu, has lamented that Nigeria has not been fair to him, despite his contribution to nation building. Kalu, who shed tears during the Senate valedictory session held on Saturday at the National Assembly in Abuja, said people he gave transport fares to travel to Lagos are now living in wealth while calling him a thief. The former Abia state governor thanked the Ninth Senate for standing by him during his difficult times, insisting that Nigeria has not been fair to him. Shatima is the outgoing senator for Bornu Central, while President Bola Tinubu's wife represents Lagos Central until the inauguration of the 10th Senate on Tuesday. The vice president encouraged legislators elect in the incoming 10th National Assembly to put the interest of the nation first in all their dealings. Re echoing Senator Shatima's position, the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Luremi Tinubu, reminded the incoming legislators of the task ahead towards nation building, adding that the current administration needs the wealth of experience of the outgoing lawmakers. I went through one of my best times in life in this Senate, and I also went through one of my difficult period also in this senate before i came to the senate before i came into politics i can buy anything body can buy i'm not a thief those that put me in prison no reason they put me in prison they took over all my businesses and want to kill me. But I survived it. I'm in the Senate with you people. It's not the end to what we have done. It's not the end to United Nigeria. It's not the end to Brother Skipper. But this Senate was I called. We are with me. I never lacked. When the PDP that I was governed. And we need to give so much to this nation. This new administration beckons hope for this nation. And anyone who doesn't have hope, you can't really move ahead. This new administration beckons that. And we have to make the necessary sacrifice, which starts with the new 10th Assembly. For me, as a woman of faith, I believe is double grace. Number 10 will give us double grace and God will sustain us and I can only wish my colleagues that are here that I can only tell you see you around and when we leave this place we are going to still meet some of you I will be consulting for advice and please don't be bashful I will need all of you and I believe that this administration needs your wealth of experience God bless you thank you so much I'm grateful we bid farewell to this chapter. Let us remember that our journey has just begun. For some of us, new path beckon 
and the mantle of leadership passes into fresh hands. To those who will continue this noble calling, I extend my sincerest congratulations and heartfelt, heartfelt wishes. Cherish this honor bestowed upon you, for it is a sacred trust, and let the spirit of collaboration guide your every step. To my colleagues, to my fellow colleagues who will depart this chamber, I address you not as colleagues left behind, but as friends who have become an integral part of my history. We have shared countless moments of triumph and defeat, standing shoulder to shoulder. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has raised alarm over a plot by the All Progressives Congress, APC, to intimidate and threaten lawmakers elect with a view to influencing the margins of the leadership of the National Assembly. The National Publicity Secretary, PDP, Debo Olugwagba, disclosed this on Saturday while addressing journalists at a press conference in Abuja. The party alleged receiving reports about the ruling party trying to arrest individuals who are considered to be strong proponents of the independence of the legislature and the right of members elect to vote for their leadership. Olobwagba emphasized that the independence of the legislature is a prerequisite for democracy and therefore insists that the members elect in both houses must be allowed to elect their leadership. The party, however, charged the lawmaker elect to remain steadfast in their resolve and continue to keep in mind that Nigerians expect them to assert their independence in the election of the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Our party insists that members elect in the both houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives, the more they are allowed to elect their own leadership. It is important to say this, and this is important and very critical to our own democracy, that the National Assembly is the symbol of the sovereignty of the people in a participatory de democracy. Because what sovereignty? Sovereignty resides in the people. And how do you express that? It's by electing people to represent you at the National Assembly in both houses and through the... At the fully packed presidential election petition tribunal sitting in Abuja on Saturday, a video recording was played showing when the Independent National Electoral Commission chairman, Yakubu Mahmoud, assured Nigerians that there would be no going back on using the bimodal voter accreditation system, Beavers Machines, to accredit voters and transmit scanned polling unit results in real time. Lawyers, numbering over a hundred, aside from the five-man panel of the court, as well as visitors, including Obi and his entourage, watched the video. On Saturday, Obi's legal team, represented by J.S. Okutepa-san, sought leave of court to play videos regarding the election. The court approved it. The first video that was played was when the INEC chairman held a meeting with political party leaders and other stakeholders saying, and I quote, there is no going back on the deployment of beavers for voter accreditation and real-time transmission of results on election day, end of quote. He was seen saying the commission issued a statement relating to the inability of presiding officers to upload results from beavers to IREV adding there were technical hitches. The continuous hearing of the case is further adjourned to the 13th of June, 2023. To and in the wisdom of their lordships, they say the application ought to have been filed earlier. And so because it was not filed earlier, uh, the, the characteristically as uh, judges should do, they struck it out. So there is no devastating consequences, as you may be thinking of, because there are many ways to kill the rat. And then we will um, we have other ways to invite INEC to come and answer the questions. We wanted to put certain questions to INEC. 
and we didn't file the application within time. They purported um, a technical glitch, <clears throat> how it affects only presidential and did not affect National Assembly. The former governors of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduje and Rabu Konkoso, have blamed one another over the demolition of several buildings in Kano State by the Abba Yusuf-led administration. The two governors addressed the State House correspondents shortly after a closed-door meeting with President Bola Tinubu at the Asorok Villa. Ganduje accused his predecessor, Rabi Konkoso, of masterminding the development, alleging that they were illegally acquired and built. The distraught former governor said the demolitions were executed without due process and therefore breached the law. However, Ganduje, while responding to what the president's response was, said he would have slapped Konkoso if he had met him inside the villa because he heard he was around. Responding to the allegation made by his successor, Kwankoso said the governor of Kanu State, Abba Yusuf, had served the warning before exemption of office and most of the properties being destroyed were built in government premises. So far, the governor operated in four places. One is a faculty of uh, at, uh, under the University, Kano University of Science and Technology, hospitality. And that was a building done by Audubak, or of blessed memory, as governor. It was operated as a hotel. When I went back in 2011, I converted it to be part of Kano University of Science and Technology. Governor then demolished everything there the entire structures was billions of naira and sacked all the students and sacked all the lecturers demolished and he was building or they were in the process of building a mall mall where to buy and sell and who owned that the buildings I wish at the end of it I can show you some cliff. How the governor himself went there administering the demolition without even investigating. How can a governor do that? What's the importance of education? Leadership, you need to investigate, you need to find out because you need facts. No notice, nothing. So now people are abusing Konkoso and are abusing his government. There are some areas now, if you go with the red cap, you will be lynched. I'm telling you this. Ask your correspondent in Kano. That is two, three. They were told one building by a private person belongs to my son. Therefore, they should go and demolish it. It was found out the man built a new plaza, rented it out to many traders, many youth have got employment there. He went for 4 a.m. In the bid to enhance access to justice for children, the Nigeria Police Force has publicly presented the standard operating procedures for handling children in contact with the law. The procedures put together in collaboration with the European Union and UNICEF seeks to provide child-friendly procedures that are sensitive and responsive to the specific needs and circumstances of children in Nigeria. Speaking at the launch in Abuja, the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Baba, who commended the initiative, decried known instances such as baby factories, forced labor, rape, and the Almagiri system that brings children in contact with the law, calling for sensitization. The Chief of Child Protection, UNICEF, Ibrahim Sese, who urged the government to ensure the implementation of Section 207 of the Child's Rights Act, noted that the SOPs will make sure 
the best interest of children at all times. This is an addition to what we have. It will guide us, it will direct us, and our practice in contact with children as law enforcement officers will be seen in a very civilized and acceptable manner. I want to also extend our gratitude and appreciation for the European Union, for the UNICEF, and all the NGOs and other associations for putting in resources, energy, and materials to develop this standard operating procedure. The main objectives of the SOPs are aimed to provide guidance in dealing with the child that is in conflict, that is in contact with the law, to ensure that best practices, best interests of children are observed throughout uh, every procedure, um, to standardize the procedures for dealing with the child in contact with the law to ensure accountability, transparency, consistency and uniformity. Nigerians have been called upon not to relent in their faith in the judiciary while also remaining steadfast and unshaken in the third arm of government, which is an important element of democratic government. The chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, Section on Public Interest and Development Law, Monde Ubani, handed down the plea on Saturday while speaking at a press conference in Lagos ahead of its forthcoming annual conference. The theme of the conference is post-election Nigeria, the judiciary in the eye of the storm. He said the theme of the conference bothers on the judiciary's intervention in the electoral process as all eyes are fixed at the various election petition tribunals where those who are aggrieved with the outcome of the 2023 elections are seeking judicial redress. Obani called for a probe into the regime of the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Enefele, for alleged role in the mismanagement of the economy an investigation into the scam of Air Nigeria, which made the immediate past aviation minister, Hadi Sereka, perpetrated before his exit. Our faith in the judiciary remain unshaken, as those who desire justice shall certainly be served with justice without favor or fear. We invite the press to be part of this conference where this very important topic will be thoroughly diagnosed by these legal giants. We applaud the suspension of the Central Bank Governor, Mr. Godwin Emefeli, and urge that his regime be thoroughly investigated for his alleged role in the mismanagement of our economy. In the same vein, Mr. President is being called upon to look into the scam of Air Nigeria, which the immediate past aviation minister, Hadi Sirika, perpetrated before his exit. Our your state governor, Engineer Sheyi Makide, on Friday, flagged off the construction of the dualized 8.3 kilometers Akobo Ojirio Dogo Barracks along Oda Abar Junction, located in Lagelu local government area of Oyo State. The governor, while speaking at the flag of ceremony, reaffirmed the commitment of his administration to the development of the state, while also reiterating his resolve to continue to put in place critical infrastructure that would open up the state to bring investors from both the local and global business environment. Justifying the dualization of the road, Makinde said he would have just start the single lane, but had to consider the volume of people within the Olonda Aba access and its environs, noting that the need for dualization will come up in another three to four years. He assured the residents whose property will be affected of prompt payment of compensation, urging the people to cooperate with the contractors handling the project. 
The governor also named the entire 15.5 kilometer stretch from Idiakwe Junction to Alon Daba after the immediate past governor of River State, Inyeso Mwike. This road is vital to the people of Lagilu local government area as it connects Akubo to Alon Daba and uh, to bring development to these uh, houses. The situation on this road has caused our people hardship and I again thank the people for their endurance. We know it has not been easy, but in a situation where you have limited resources, you must follow a strategy that ensures that while you are carrying out projects, if possible, you are able to raise revenue from those projects to enable you to carry out even more projects. I will also use this opportunity to name the stretch of road from Ideakwe all the way to Alize, all the way to Olonda Aba as Governor Yesam Wike Road. It is our belief that the road with ease movement reduce body and offers a tremendous potential for stimulating economy. With this flag off, I have no doubt that banks, industries, and companies will begin to spring up in our area. As a contractor, we assure you of the best in terms of quality and timely delivery with respect to specification, standard, and proper traffic management during construction. Up next on the Panta News is Foreign News. After this break. Welcome back. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky appears to have confirmed that his country's long-awaited counter-offensive against Russia has started. He said on Saturday that counter-offensive and defensive actions are taking place, but he added that he would not talk in detail about which stage or state the counter-offensive was in. The comments come after an escalation of fighting in the south and east of Ukraine and speculation about progress of the widely anticipated push. Ukraine troops are reported to have advanced in the east near Bramut and in the south near Zaporizhia and have carried out long-range strikes on Russian targets. But assessing the reality on the front lines is difficult with the two warring sides presenting contrasting narratives. Ukraine claiming progress and Russia saying that it's fighting off attacks. Russian President Vladimir Putin said in a video interview published on Friday that Ukrainian forces had certainly begun their offensive, but that attempted advances had failed with heavy casualties. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made an unannounced visit to Kyiv on Saturday as Ukrainian forces were engaged in fierce fighting against Russia on the southern front line. Trudeau, who is due to meet Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky later on Saturday, placed flowers by a wall displaying the faces of soldiers killed in combat while a military orchestra played. He also visited an open-air exhibition featuring destroyed military vehicles. Ukraine's Deputy Defense Minister Alexander Polishuk handed Trudeau a container holding shrapnel from a rocket that fell on the Black Sea port city of Odessa. A group of Ukrainian soldiers who received training in Canada spoke with Trudeau. One of them, Colonel Petro Ostachuk, told reporters the troops received training for elite shooters, engineers, and young commanders. We'll take another break to bring you sport news.
Welcome back. Igor Swiatek battled past Karolina Muchova 6-2-5-7-6-4 to win her third French Open title on Saturday and become the first woman to successfully defend the Roland Garros title since 2007. The 22-year-old Swiatek is just the third woman in the Open era to win each of her first four Grand Slam finals. The poll adding to her 2020 and 2022 titles in Paris and last year's US Open trial. Monica Seles and Naomi Osaka are the only other players to accomplish the feat. Swatek, the world number one from Poland, is also the youngest woman to claim back-to-back -back French Open titles since Monica Seles in the early 1990s. Justine Henin was the last woman to win successive Roland Garros crowns when she captured her third in a row and fourth in total 16 years ago. And that's the Primetime News on MITV. Thanks for watching. I am Jimoke Michaels. Good night.